Hi everybody and big welcome to a deck tech video or also something of a card review for Hulu's Clever Conductor. Now at first glance, a lot of people might say that it looks pretty mediocre. It has a really interesting casting cost. Let's actually talk about that first. If you have a Jeweled Lotus, you can get it into play by just only the Jeweled Lotus because you can actually pay triple blue for it. Well, you can play white, blue, black for it, but triple blue means, yeah, Jeweled Lotus beautifully. But we're not playing it because of the Jeweled Lotus mana cost trick. We're playing it for those two abilities together. Whenever you discard one or more cards, exile them from your graveyard. And when Tulus dies, specifically dies, no other trick, but only dies, put the card exile with it into its owner's hand. Also, when Tulu's Clever Conductor enters the battlefield, it connives, meaning draw a card, then discard a card. If you discard a non-land card, put the plus one counter on this creature. But for example, let's say you have Tulu's in play and someone or yourself cast a windfall. You will now discard your entire hand to your graveyard, but your entire graveyard will go to exile. And then when you kill Tulu's some way with your some of your sack tricks, you're retaking everything you've accumulated into it. Now, some of you might say that it's very easy to interact with this. All you need to do is just bounce Tulu's back to your hand in preventing it from dying. However, most of the sack effects, like for example, sacrifice a creature, is actually part of the cost. The two coulons right there indicate that it's an additional cost. If we, for example, look at this oracle text, we can easily see here an additional cost to cost this sacrifice a creature. So Tulus will be in the graveyard with a trigger on its stack in the same time this actually hits the stack. So in what cool way could we exploit Tulus the most? The answer is actually quite simple. Necropotence. Today's deck has been brought to us by Pontus. And he actually named this deck then Skuggigaveskan. Which translates into the Shadow Bag. Or maybe more accurate, the shadowy bag. Something bent that way. In any case, this is a basic, typical, very similar Grixis or kind of Esper, kind of Turbo, Pierre, Adnos deck with a Necropotence focus. And if you're actually interested in seeing this deck in action, me, Pontus, Jordan, and Anis actually played a gameplay video with some new commanders from New Capenna. Link in the description below the video or a link up there if you're interested in seeing this deck in some action. Tulos basically helps out with the Necropotence game plan. You see, a big problem with Necropotence is that you sometimes have to discard to hand size because you can't win in instant speed currently and you have to pass turn. So you're sculpting the perfect seven and then you go to your next turn with your perfect seven and try to win there. Now both Necropotas and Tulos will exile cards you discard to your graveyard, but Necropotence will send them to permanent exile, where Tulos will send them to a special Tulos exile, where you can regain them. Now, both of these are triggers, so if you discard a card by any variant form of effect, you're gonna get two triggers. And you can layer these triggers however you want. So you will always, or well, you should always, layer so that Tulo's trigger will happen above the Necropotence trigger, so that you do get your cards into the Tulo Special Exile, where you can regain them later. Now, there's one very important thing to know about Tulos, or something to understand, is that Tulos is a burst value. When Tulos dies, you gain a burst value. This is something you're gonna be able to reoccur continuously throughout the game. Well, you can actually recast Tulos for 5 mana, and then 7 mana, and then 9 mana, and yeah, you see, it's not gonna be something you can do over and over, maybe two times a game, but it's something that you're looking into doing once in a game for a big, big explosive burst of value. So inside Pontus deck, we have something like Oblivion Crown and Bone Miser, a huge value engine for five mana, a little bit expensive. But if you have Oblivion Crown in your hand and Bone Miser, you can do a really interesting discard storm combo run here. So you have now a discard outlet, which means you can discard a card however you want. And you have a Bone Miser that will give you some value whenever you discard a card, depending on what the card you're discarding here. So for example, if you discard a land card, you gain two black mana, that's, that's good, that is mana. If you discard a non-creature, 
uh, non-land, you draw a card, and if you got a creature, you will create a zombie. That's probably the worst uh, outcome here. But in any case, you can basically discard your entire hand for various effects of more mana and more card draw. And as you're drawing cards, when you discard cards, you can discard those cards as well to really dig through your deck. And eventually, you will draw into something of these variants. Either some spells that you can use to sacrifice your commander to basically return everything you've discarded back to your hand and continue to discard them to the bone miser value also you can just draw into like a damn and just destroy your own commander i mean you just need to discard a land card to get the two black mana so you can cost damn at your own commander so Tulus isn't like your grindy value engine commander it's your burst of a one shot a consumable effect to really help you during a storm run. And with Necropotence, let's say you draw 20 cards, and you discard 12 cards down to hand size, and now you have 12 cards exiled into two lows, you pass turn, no one is able to kill you, or, well, no one is able to win. Also, you have a blocker here, perfect blocker, to protect you after the win attempt from Necropotence, because if this blocks and dies, you're regaining all of those cards during an opponent's turn. You don't need to discard your hand size during an opponent's end step. You're fine. You're gonna go to your turn and you're gonna, if, if you have blocked with your commander, you're gonna have those cards in your hand. If you haven't blocked with your commander, you just use one of the many different sack effects that you have inside the deck for some ritual mana and then regain the whole bunch of cards back to your hand. And now you're in sorcerer speed with a huge hand size. So you could say that Tulos is something that is enhancing or enabling combos or making the combo run easier. But that really means, and I want to emphasize this, that you don't have a card drawing commander. You don't have a grindy commander. So your mulligans, your opening hand is really key. So let's take a look at some opening hands. Now this hand is pretty good. It's not the burstiest of hands in the world, but you're gonna get some rocks into play. You're gonna get a wish cloud talisman. You can have a lot of rocks to actually cost a odd nauseum that you tutor for with your wish claw. Here's another hand, and here's a good reason of showcasing hand that doesn't get somewhere. You have some turn one plays. Well, you only have one land, that's a big problem, but you do have some rocks, you have some sack outlets, you have some interaction, but you don't have any card draw and you don't have any form of win. You're gonna sit there with interaction in a deck that can't grind. That's bad. Here's another hand. You probably have to mulligan only one land. You have a frantic search, but it's just one land. You have Flusser Storm. There's nothing to develop from this hand. This is an interesting hand. It's very pod dependent. We have mana. We have a Doffy Voidwalker. We could use our Doffy Voidwalker to interact with our opponents if we believe we're gonna interact and stop our opponents with the Dolphy and we might get some value from the Dolphy then this is a hand you can keep but it's a really risky hand you could really get stuck here if this was my first seven or second seven I would probably mulligan this hand but if this was my like I'm down to five I would probably keep this hand this hand I really like. You have a turn one ghostly pilfer. That is something of a card draw engine for you. So you can go into some pseudo grindy game plan. You have a wish cloud to tutor for your combo to win the game. Or you have a wish cloud to tutor for things you need to have during the pod, depending on the pod. I really like this hand. It has a turn one commander from the Ubud Lotus. So we're going to get a draw on the Scott effect. That immediately, that's great. That will help us sculpt towards something. We have an enlightening tutor. That's also great for the Necropotence. Big problem with this hand, we don't have free black mana, but we could draw into that later. Now, even if we don't have the Necropotence from the Lightning Tutor, we still have a Flusser Storm and a Diabolic Intent. So this hand could really develop forward somehow anyway. Turn 1, Mystic Remora, Snap Keep. You also have a Demonic Consultation, so if you just draw into the fastest, you're golden. You also have a Force of Negation with your Mystic Remora, so you could draw into some blue cards. You can cast the Force of Negation with your opponent's turns as well. So, yeah. This hand will probably work out. This is a really interesting hand. We have a Peer into the Abyss. We have a Yule Lotus. Those cards are great. We're gonna get our Commander into play for some draw on this card to sculpt the hand better. But we don't have the Rituals. We have a Pact of Negation that is great to protect our Peer into the Abyss when we try to win. But we're never really gonna cast Peer into the Abyss with this hand. Unless we draw into some really amazing top deck with Ritual rocks here. If this was my opening seven, I wouldn't risk it for that. I would probably mulligan this, but if this was my, like, I'm down to five, 
I will probably keep this. In the end, Tulus is a very interesting gimmicky Necropotence discard deck. It is a commander for someone that wanna be very technical and very unique and do some really new cool tricks with Necro and other discard effects. The absolute biggest reason to play this as your commander is to get more explosive power during your storm run. But also a big reason why you might wanna play this is because you like the stack and you like rules. It's definitely not the best CDH commander in the world, but it's actually something that can win in CDH pods. I mean, in the end, any deck that has Fasa's consult as their win con have a chance. Now that's it for this little short deck tech tutorial video. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time, guys. Take care out there. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.